Hey folks, welcome to an unboxing video of Enchanters from Mythic Games in our Phoenix line. Now the Phoenix line is going to be comprised of games in which we cooperate with another company, in this case, Jindy, on a previous project that ran through Kickstarter so that we can bring it back to life, so to speak. Not that Enchanters was dead, don't get me wrong, or any other game in the Phoenix line was dead, so to speak. We just wanna bring it to a larger audience if possible. Because they're gonna be games that we enjoy as a company. And so that's what the Phoenix line is. This is Enchanters, in case you were wondering, we're talking about 5.59 kilograms of game right here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up the box. I'll share some suggestions on how you might store the game, what I did with my copy, my personal copy, and we'll go from there. So let's get down to the table. And so here we have our box of enchanters ready to go. So we'll go ahead and just cut that bad boy open. And down the side over here as well. And that might be what we're looking for. Because that'll come out. And this will come out like this, that. And then this will come right out like so. And check inside the box. There's your mythic deck. So that comes in outside the, the core box, but still inside the actual shipping box. So all this cardboard can go right in there. And here we have our box of enchanters with that mythic deck that comes separately, but still inside the box. So let's go ahead and get the cellophane off of that pep. So we'll go ahead and flip this over and just in the side here, we'll cut a little and that comes off like so. And we can look at it over here. We have all of this good information here. So this is what the back of the deluxe box looks like has English and then also French down here, two to four players, 12, ages 12 and up, 30 to 60 minutes per game, which is about average. It depends on how many people you have playing, but French and uh, English and <laughs> English and French here as well. Some pictures of the components so you get a good idea of what's going on there. So let's go ahead and get this open. So first things first, we have the rule book here, uh, like so. And we have been brought or made aware that there was a misprint with the different uh, Odyssey expansions mixing up with the East Quest expansions. So notice that that is there. We've been made aware of it and we're looking at ways that uh, we can kind of rectify that situation. So be uh, up on that. We have a components list, so of the conversions table. So this is what the tokens, the cardboard tokens are gonna to look like, and this will be their plastic uh, counterparts. So that's there. You got English on one side, French on the other. Then you have your easy start manual that we decided to include so that you wouldn't have to dive completely into the rule book for all of the different factions and all of the different rules that come along with each one of those different uh, things. You can just follow this and get started on your first game. That'll give you a really good idea about that. Then we have, of course, all of the cardboard tokens that's in here with the life counter and so forth and so on. So we'll go over those in just a few moments. You also have your uh, token bag that was included in the ultimate pledge. So that's there as well. Uh, you also have all of these, uh, all of these gem tokens that are going to replace the cardboard uh, wood tokens, uh, wood, the cardboard money. And then you also have all of these plastic tokens that we're gonna be taking a look at as well. Uh, here are some of the uh, 
little punch thingies that we need for the tracker that will go for as well. These little things here, you can throw them away. You don't need them. They're just there to help in transit. So a uh, little, these numbered plastic dividers. This might be good to keep because it'll help you with uh, storing your tokens maybe, but any of the other things in here, they're not necessary for using it. Uh, but you have all of these goodies in here as well. And we'll be taking a look at these uh, in more detail later on. But I'm just showing you everything that comes in the box right off the bat. So here you have the uh, trackers and all of the different um, warlords and the, and the uh, villages and so forth like that. And here's some more of those plastic dividers that you don't need to keep in there. You can just toss those out, don't need them. They're just to help things stay put in transit. Then you also have a whole bunch of cards and dividers. You have the dividers here. We'll be looking at them closer in just a moment. Just going through everything that's here. Uh, banners, um, uh, quests, and so forth. Here are some more of those plastic thingies that you just get away. And more cards. Cards, cards, cards. Mmm. So again, we'll be taking, we'll be pusting these open in just a few minutes, looking at them. I just, you, you can't, oh, there's another one. All right. So again, just so many cards in this thing. Flip. All right. And this guy right here. These guys right here, wow. And then you have the, the play mat. And it is a big one. let me tell you. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll do this first. It's gonna take most of the screen to do that. So first of all, you have your individual uh, mats that you're gonna be using per person. So there are four of those guys, boom, boom boom and boom. Then you have this guy, which is going to have everything that you need from all of the different expansions. It's very nice neoprene stitched on the outsides. So it's going to retain its, its, uh, its, uh, uh, shape and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, not muted or anything like that. The, the colors pop on it pretty good. So that is the play mat. So what I'm basically doing here is each a uh, package of these decks are going to be opened. And of course I didn't go through all of this cause that would be terribly boring for you, but I'm just going to take each of these decks out, take the randomizer and put it over here. And then um, just take the actual deck itself and put it over here by itself. And then I'll take the divider that goes with it and stick it right on top of it like that. And that's that's all I'm doing is I separate these different decks here uh, so that they are all separated into their own little deck. Take the uh, uh, divider here and put that out here as well. And that's all I'm doing as I separate out the different decks. Then after you have all of the different divider cards with the decks, you can go ahead and take the, the rule book here and either use the graphic that's here, the guide to the expansions that's on the front. Even though we do have the misprint, it's not that big of a deal. You still have all of the uh, different shields that are up there that will help you delineate which uh, decks go with which expansions. But if that's still kind of rubbing you the wrong way, you can go to uh, page nine and following of the rule book. And that will give you a delineated list, a very detailed list of everything that comes in each of the different expansions. So that will also help you uh, delineate if the front of the book doesn't do it for you. Now, some of the reason why you may not want to follow what goes into each expansion is that you might want to use something more then you do things from that particular expansion. For example, the wound deck that comes uh, in the Overlord expansion, I like to use that a lot. So I'm not 
probably going to keep it sequestered away with the Overlord expansion stuff. I'm going to keep it somewhere else so I can easily get to it, probably with the core cards and so forth, because it'll be something that I use probably all of the time because I like using it. Now, what I did, and it might seem a little stupid or strange to you guys, but I just alphabetized all of the decks because... I'm not really worried about keeping all of the different expansions together. I just want to be able to find the decks that I want to play with when I do it. I'm going to be using the randomizer a lot, so uh, when I get those four decks out that I want to play with this game, I want to be able to go and alphabetically find them really quick. But that's not what you have to do with your copy. You can uh, separate them according to expansions so that you can use uh, the different things from the different expansions with the things that maybe they were meant to be used for or something or what they were designed with so that maybe there's a little bit more, I don't know, uh, freedom or flow that goes with your games. I'm not so much worried about that. I like mixing and matching different expansions with different things. Sometimes it gets me into trouble because it makes the game a little bit harder than probably it was meant to be, but I like that kind of stuff. I like the randomness. I like uh, not really knowing exactly what I'm going to run into when we run into it. Now, I may make notes and say, well, I'm not using those two groups together again, you know, that kind of thing. But as far as storage is concerned, do what you want to do. Uh, there's no real right answer to that question. Do what works best for you. So as you can see, after I've got everything out of its plastic, I've got all of the different cards that are good to go here. Um, the uh, core cards are right here. Uh, wound deck is right behind it, so forth and so on. And then I've got my randomizers here, and then everything is alphabetical, starting from that with all of the different clan decks. Uh, I've got my uh, warlords over here, villages right here. This is where the um, uh, mats are, are supposed to be stored. And then all of these other little spots right in here, right in here, and down in here is where I'm going to keep all of these different tokens and so forth, so that they don't mess around too much. So um, let's take a look at those tokens first. All right, so first things first, we're gonna be taking a look at the tokens, of course, but um, I wanna go ahead and put this together just to show you how easy it is to put together. Some of these things, not that it, it looks hard, but sometimes these can be a little intimidating, but uh, these three pieces pop out right there, and then the little um, parts in the middle have to pop out as well, like so. You just throw those away. And then you've got some pieces on here that need to pop out, like so. And so now you've got that guy ready to go. And now these four little pieces come into play as well, like that. And so, so one side goes in one side, that's the big. The male end goes in the back there, and that can go like so. And then I've got to get this side, and that part just pops there. Okay. That end goes there. And then on the back, that end flips in as well. All right, so you are good to go at that point. So it's not very difficult at all. And in this one, I usually just go ahead, uh, I just store it with the village cards in there and it fits really well. Then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the different tokens. Uh, we've got the shuriken tokens here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at those. So um, as you can see, they're, they're pretty light. They're, they're not very substantial as far as weight is concerned. So uh, there's nothing going on there, but uh, the little shuriken tokens, as you can see, have a little shuriken on them like so. Uh, so it's pretty neat. Uh, so the shuriken uh, tokens are here uh, and I'm just gonna be putting them back into the bag because that's what I am going to be using to uh, store them because I don't have a problem with plastic bags at all. So these guys are ready to go back into the box into one of those spaces that I just showed you. And you also have some wound tokens and the reward tokens for the overlords. These are the reward tokens here, the, the kind of uh, greenish, tealish ones that are there. So these award tokens are looking pretty good. And then you also have the five uh, wound tokens, which are here. 
All right, so you can see those as well, have the little minus five blood drop on them. Um, and then we have the one tokens that are just like that, except they are, they have ones on them instead of the minus fives. All right, so you have a, a good number of those as well. And we've got the trackers. You have two sets of the sword and the shield, like so. So I'll go ahead and show those to you. So you have four sets of these um, because one is for your attack, one is for your defense. Uh, so you got one, two, three, and four of that. And then you have the uh, tracker tokens for the monster, or I'm sorry, the overlord, the extra heart, extra, extra life, extra attack tokens that are there. Then you have the pearl tokens, I believe, or what they're called. And that's these things right here. So, and again, these really kind of pop as far as color is concerned. And I know the color is a little bit off on this video. I'm having trouble with uh, the purple background in my hands. So my hands look a little bluish, but these are a really light blue, almost a fluorescent blue color. And they really pop. And then we've got the different crystals uh, and deline delineations. The green ones are denoted as ones. So that's what these guys are, the crystals. And uh, again, these are not very light. They're not hefty or anything like that, but they are good quality. I really do enjoy them. I like them a lot. Um, so, but these are the ones. And then you have the blue ones, which are the blues, which are threes. And then you have the orange ones, which, or yellow, I guess, if you want to call them yellow, uh, which are considered tens, like so. All right. So now you do also have cardboard tokens for everything. We didn't just give you um, a bunch of uh, plastic components. Uh, we also gave you the cardboard components as well, which go with them. So if you choose to, you can use these instead. They, they do pop out really easy. They're, they're good quality cardboard tokens. If you choose to, to use those instead, absolutely okay. No worries at all. There is there are a couple of tokens on here though that I wanted to point out to you though. Um, you've got the Cerebus uh, token right here, the Cerebus token, and then you also have the weather token, which is right here, or the storm token for the mummies, uh, which is that like that on one side and like this on the other. So after I have everything put in there, it's pretty clear. It's pretty simple. Um, there are some open spaces, but that's mainly because I don't have the cards sleeved. I've seen pictures of people that have sleeved all of the cards and it completely fills up all of the extra space that's in there. So as it is, there's room for expansion the way that I have it here with not sleeving my cards. And I'm absolutely okay with that. But if you do sleeve your cards, as I just said, it will fill in a lot more of that space that's there. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get back up top. So that's it for our unboxing video of Enchanters. I hope this has been helpful to you. We really just wanted to give you some suggestions, some ideas, nothing real definitive because frankly, you should probably store it and organize it the way that it makes sense for you, whether that's by expansions or if it's alphabetical as I've done it, just because it makes sense to my brain pan. Whatever you wanna do, whatever helps you get it to the table faster and more frequently, that's how you should store the box inside this deluxe bad boy right here. So again, I hope this has been helpful for you. We'll be doing this for other products in the future. So look out for those as well. Thank you for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.